Okay, in this video we're going to look at two examples of solving for a given variable in an equation which has more than one variable. One which is a rational equation and one which is a radical equation. Okay, so let's get to it. So we want to use the same strategy as if there's one variable, um, but just be really careful with our bookkeeping um, with the extra terms. So. Uh, keeping that in mind, what we're going to notice is the general first step in this case would be to cross multiply. So let's see, that's going to give us P times R plus 4 squared equals 25R. Good. Now the next thing that we can do is multiply this out this left hand side. So that's going to give us P and then R squared plus 8R um, <clears throat> plus 16 equals 25R. Okay, good. Now the next thing that we can do is multiply this P through. So that's going to give us PR squared plus 8PR plus 16 equals 25R. Okay, good. And then finally what we can do is subtract this 25R from both sides and that's going to give us PR squared plus um, 8 P minus 25R plus 6. So I did a couple of steps at once here. Notice I subtracted 25R from both sides and then I factored an R out of the term that was associated with it. So notice I get 8P minus 25 times R, but that's going to be 8PR minus 25R, which is exactly what I get from subtracting this orange underline over to the left hand side of the equation. And so now notice this is exactly a quadratic equation. So this is a quadratic equation. Um, a r squared plus b r plus c um, with a equals p good b equals 8 p minus 25 and c equals 6. So that means we can use the quadratic formula. It'll be a little bit messy but we can do it and that's going to give us r equals um, negative b so notice we're going to have negative this, that's going to be negative 8p plus 25. So negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared. So that's going to be 8p minus 25 squared. Then minus 4 times a times c. So we have minus 4 times 6 is 24 times uh, p. So that's minus 24p. Okay, good. And then all of this is over um, 2 times a, so that's over 2 times p. <clears throat> Okay, good. So now I'm going to move this over to the right hand side of the board and then we'll simplify. So notice we're going to have r equals negative 8p uh, plus 25 plus or minus the square root. And so now I want to square this out. So I'll get 64p squared. And then I'll have 8 times 25 is 200, but I'll have two of those. So that's minus 400p. And then 25 squared is 625. 625, and then I have minus 24p. Okay, good. And now that's all over 2p. Okay, great. So now I can simplify that a little bit more. So I have negative 8p. Um, plus 25 plus or minus the square root of 64p squared and now I have negative 400p and a neg another negative 24p so that's negative uh, 424p plus 625 that's under all under the radical and then we have this is all over 2p Good. And that's the final answer for solving this for R. Okay, so I'll clean up the board and then we'll look at this second example.
<coughs> okay, so now we're ready to look for this at the second example. So since I have a radical and in fact I have a square root, it's probably best to square both sides of the equation first. So notice that's going to give us L squared equals L zero squared. And then when we square the square root, they cancel. That'll give us one minus V squared over C squared. Okay, fantastic. Now we can get to solving for V. So maybe the first step would be to divide by L0. So we get L squared over L0 squared equals one minus V squared over C squared. Then maybe we'd like to get rid of the fractions and we can do that by multiplying this whole thing by C squared. Great, and that's gonna give us C squared L squared over L zero squared equals C squared minus V squared. Great, so the next thing that I wanna do is maybe I'll add V squared to both sides and then subtract um, this big term from both sides. Good, so that's gonna put me in the form of V squared equals c squared minus c squared l squared over l zero squared. Okay, great. So now I can uh, go ahead and factor a c squared out of that because that's a common factor on the left hand side and that's gonna give, sorry, on the right hand side and that's gonna give us v squared equals c squared one minus l squared over l zero squared and now we can take the square root of both sides and we get V equals plus or minus C times the square root of one minus L squared over L zero squared. Good. And now uh, generally you would just take the positive square root in this case because this is actually an example from special relativity um, having to do with length contraction moving at a velocity of V. Okay, that's the end of the video.